This fantastic ancient world has been invaded by powerful enemies who rule in the dark centuries have passed since Lots defeated them with the Spear of Destiny. Now monsters and orcs dominate these lands with complete freedom without anyone to confront them. Only a remnant member of the Light Swords believes in this ancient story. He travels through different places in search of the legendary Spear of Destiny. To liberty again this world of the powerful enemies as their yours ancestors did several centuries ago. The great and eternal epic battle begins. Hello you Catherine wheels that someone was sick on so that when the Catherine wheel spins around it flicks sick all over everybody. Jim Sterling here and this is Spear of Destiny. And if you are excited thinking this was related to Wolfenstein at all. Ha <laughs> ha 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 ha. No, this is in fact another game that's inexplicably on the PlayStation 4, which seems to be the new home for Drek. Here we are with Spear of Destiny, a game that I think wants to be Dark Souls. Let's see how combat looks. We'll pick up our first relic. So here's combat. The game doesn't really teach you anything, so right now I was trying to learn what the fuck I was doing. This is my very first run. Uh, there are several runs that you will see over the course of this video. I realise the video is not immensely long, yet it's long enough to get many, many runs in. Because the game, it turns out, is fucking bullshit. Okay, so you're looking at this here, and maybe thinking, how much is that going to cost? You know, Unity, uh, not great assets if they're original, and... Yeah, looks like something someone cobbled together in an afternoon. You're thinking, five bucks? Maybe? I mean, ten at an outside. But it's $16.99. Oh, sorry, unless you're on PlayStation Plus, in which case it's $15.29. You get a nice PS Plus discount on this one. Uh, we're just moving to the next relic. Uh, I've not seen a horse. The uh, thing at the beginning, the quest... Uh, basically a quest at the beginning uh, tells you to find your horse. I haven't seen a horse yet. I've just moved from relic to relic and so far I've never gotten past relic 3. Relic 3 is the tricky one. Normally because by that point um, your health has been whittled down to a ludicrous degree because one single hit from a skeleton is enough to uh, take a significant chunk off you. Even when you block, uh, as I found out when I learned about blocking and tried to block stuff. As I say, right now, still learning the ins and outs. We've got lock on sorted out, but as you see, like the amount of my health that's gone here, and there's no healing. I pressed all the buttons, I looked around the map. You'll actually see me exploring the map later. So I had to pause for a moment as I said map. Um, actually, funnily enough, to the game's credit, uh, it's got a large map and they put things in it. Why, I don't know. Anyway, we skipped ahead. Uh, here I am a little bit wiser, learning learning about dodging and, and blocking, trying to Dark Souls this up a bit, because it, as I say, the game seems to want to be Dark Souls, so let's be Dark Souls. Let's play this like Dark Souls. Thing is, Dark Souls is positively kind to you, generous even compared to this game. At least Dark Souls has a, a level of fairness to it, uh, a sense of, of balance. It's a harsh game. And it punishes your mistakes without mercy. But as I've always said, it's a game about hope. It's a game about giving players the tools to succeed. It's a game about success. Uh, as much as people say prepare to die, I've always said the, the idea of Dark Souls to me isn't prepare to die. It's always prepare to get back up. This game doesn't have that sense. Uh, it doesn't really give you a sense of encouragement. I hate it every time I got near a relic because I knew I'd get into another slow, clunky... It, it, I mean, it's hard to convey with just the visuals. Like, how this game feels is awful. Uh, many times the lock-on doesn't quite work. Uh, it might lock you on automatically, it might lock you on without a reticle, it might lock you on uh, and not keep you facing the enemy so you, your back's exposed as you're trying to, you know, step back. Uh, the dodge roll is interesting. It seems to have invincibility frames, but the visual feedback still acts as if you're taking damage, I think. It seems to me that you get you get a, like a red border thing going. Um, 
To date, the most successful I've ever been is not trying to be tactical, not trying to give a shit about anything, but just wailing on the skeletons as much as I can. That seems to be the best way to get any sort of success going in this game. We are just here. Uh, obviously the game's got a stamina meter, a very important tactical part of the Dark Souls experience. Here, just a fucking annoyance. Just, uh hit that skeleton so that didn't go too well uh, but if you're more aggressive than that I found you can at least get rid of the first skeleton sometimes the second skeleton taking no damage skeleton three don't fucking ask me I couldn't tell you a, a thing about any strategy for skeleton three skeleton three can suck my golden dick is what skeleton three can do I don't like skeleton three this is 17 bucks this has an MSRP of... That's almost $20 for this. For this complete bullshit. Anyway, we're, we're going on our slow walk towards the next relic with time-lapse clouds going in the sky. They move very fast, the clouds. Um, interesting bit of visual noise as well. They put some noise over the... like a filter. Like it's Silent Fucking Hill or something. Okay, here we go again. Welcome to the fuck palace. See if you can... no. Just lucky to get a fucking hit in on the bastard. So, that's how that goes. That's been my experience with the game completely. Imagine that over and over and over again. Like fucking Groundhog Day, but shit. If Bill Murray... I don't even think Bill Murray could save this game. If he just, like, appeared like the toasty guy from Mortal Kombat in the corner and just shrugged him and, I don't know, I'm Bill Murray, I guess, in that voice he has. You know, I'm, I, I guess I'm Bill Murray now. Um, I can't do a Bill Murray impersonation. I would never even try. He's a national treasure, and I wouldn't sully his legacy by trying to emulate him in any way whatsoever. So, as you can see, here we are with, with the more aggressive approach. I did kill that, the camera seemed to just flip its shit in celebration. So Skeleton 1 you deal with by just going to town on that bony fucker. And yeah, that's that's that one. Skeleton 2 I think you're supposed to be a bit more nuanced. It's like every single one has its own set of tactics, but the game doesn't tell you really how to fight or what to do or why you're doing it, or what the point is, or why you should not turn it off and just play Dark Souls instead. Which I've been doing. I've been replaying Dark Souls 3 recently, having a real good laugh with it. Uh, it's been good to get back to it. I've been doing that while juggling work stuff. Uh, just the amount of work I've been doing lately, I've just decided this past week to uh, try and take it a bit easier and play things for fun, uh, and just, just not stress out so much. Um, I mean, Dark Souls 3, not not the the exact kind of game to play when you're trying not to stress out too much, but I've been enjoying playing, um, what's it, Ashes of Ariandel, is that the, the DLC? I've not tried the Ring City yet, uh, I've got them both installed. Uh, I never have time to really follow up on DLC expansions. Uh, I've normally got new games to worry about, which is why I don't do reviews for DLC. As you can see here, the tactic with Skeleton 2 just did not pay off. I'm at a sliver of health. And this is where I realised I'd just be wasting my time going for that relic and dying to that skeleton again. So I decided to see what was this way. So, you know, I'll keep talking and, and we'll go this way. Sorry, I hit my microphone filter there. I apologise for that. If there was any disruption in the sound there. Here we are, just jogging along the field. Having a lovely time. So anyway... Yeah, I don't really get an opportunity to play much DLC, so I never really get around to playing the Dark Souls DLCs or the Bloodborne DLCs as much as I want to, uh, would like to. Uh, so I've been definitely enjoying actually spending some time with Ariandel and getting stuff. I just got that uh, that special weapon, the, the shield sword weapon. Uh, that was that was fun. Beat the the, the Guardian Cemetery, whatever it was. Um, big snowy bastard with a lot of wolves uh, so that was a good giggle uh, and yeah I, I, I forgot how much I missed that game I, I forgot how much I really really loved it 
Uh, being the third game in a series, I thought that uh, it wouldn't really capture me as much as the other ones did, but as I said in the Jim Inquisition Awards last year, when I looked back, few games had as much of my time as Dark Souls 3. Uh, I, I invested so much into it. Um, could never stop respecking, constantly going to Rosaria and, and reallocating stuff. Uh, I recently gave up my strength decks and went back to a faith build just to play with miracles and shit again uh, and, and electric weapons and like all that stuff. None of that I think you can do in this, uh, but I tell you one thing this game does do that Dark Souls can't offer you and we're about to see it because did you know that the, uh, the protagonist, for want of a better word, of Spear of Destiny is Jesus. Yes, Jesus in a mouldy looking, shitty scrap of armour. I'm about to show you. Here we go. So I got very excited. I thought, okay, we're at the end of the world. Excuse me, hiccups there. We're at the end of the world, clearly. Uh, maybe I can just go drown. So I thought, I'll, I'll just run into the water and, and that'll be that. But that's not quite how it, how it worked out because Spear of Destiny can't really let you do anything on your terms. Spear of Destiny has its own idea of how things work. This is how Spear of Destiny thinks water works. <laughs> Couldn't even. Couldn't even be fucked to let you just sink in the water like a person would sink in the water. Look how mouldy that armour looks though. Look at it, that's manky. Anyway, I mean, I, I jaw on the floor at this point. We're walking on water with our mouldy sword as well covered in it. I love that as well. The camera, the camera can go underwater and they've even got fucking water filter for the camera lens. But the character can't. Amazing. Really amazing. Now, for the rest of the video, things are going to be sped up. Because I want to communicate the horrendous experience I had without making you sit through all of it. So the rest of the video is going at top speed. Here we go, you can just watch me fail. I mean, prepare to fucking die. Namco Bandai were having a laugh when they came up with that tagline because they ain't played Spear of Destiny. I'll show you about being prepared to fucking die. Fuck me. I was right, rather amused by uh, Namco Bandai's prepare to dine teaser and everyone was thinking all oh, From Software is doing a vampire game and no, it was just something called, what's it, Code Vein or something? Reads like, the, the premise reads like some sort of kindred the embraced for the 21st century um, and it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have come off as cheesy and shitty if people hadn't thought they were getting a From Software game because the premise on its own is eh, it's alright, it's just kind of forgettable but uh, <laughs> when you consider what people thought was coming then Code Vein where you know vampires are in settlements called, oh, I forget what it is it's a load of cheesy vampire shit where they're trying to be all vampire modern. Uh, very, very amusing story, I thought, but uh, that's not this. So I got bored again, and there really isn't much else to say. I went over the mountain, and there's just more bollocks there. No enemies, no enemies, no health, no, no nothing. They made a huge map but there's a very linear path through it where content is. Uh, quite why they made the map so vast and put in so many trees. Maybe it turns into more of an open world game if you get enough of those relics. Clearly, I am never going to find out. Uh, I don't have the patience to play this ever again. Uh, I don't have the interest in playing this ever again. I don't really care that much whether or not the game opens up. I just hate it, and I'd like you all to hate it too. Bloody fucking 
bollocks.